Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the previous module, we had discussed about one and two port microwave devices. In this module, we, we will continue our discussions on the same line and we shall be discussing about three port uh, devices. So, while we had uh, derived the conditions of the S parameters for one and two port network. Uh, let us try to do the same thing for three port devices. So, in a three port device, if all the ports are matched, then our S parameter matrix will look something like this. Now, in addition, if so this is the condition for all ports are matched. Then if it is reciprocal, then we have S12 is equal to S21, S13 is equal to S31 and S23 is equal to S32. So, this is the condition for reciprocity. Reciprocity. Now, in addition to this, if it is also a lossless, we have to have And so, this uh, by the way follows from this condition that we had uh, started earlier. This whole thing will be equal to 0. Now, the problem with these two sets of equation, this set that I had derived previously, that I had stated previously and this another set. So, these were for all ports matched, this were for reciprocity and this was the condition for uh, losslessness. The problem with all these sets of equation is that they, they do not have any solution, that is a problem. So, these equations do not have a solution. So, therefore, we cannot have all the three that is matching plus reciprocity plus losslessness all together cannot achieve. So, then what is the solution? The solution is that if we relax some of these criterion, then however, it is possible. So, while we cannot have matching at all ports, we can have matching at one port, not, not more than one and along with that we can also have losslessness and reciprocity. So, if I make a small table like this. Suppose I want lossless and reciprocal and the other property that is derived desirable is matched. Then a device which is both lossless and reciprocal 
such a three port device is called T. A device which is lossless and matched is called a circulator and a device which is reciprocal and matched is called a power divider. So, from this discussion we see that so this is a let me write it down power divider. We will discuss this uh, later on all this in uh, much detail, but if we can go back here once see this uh, uh, only this T device called T it is T double E only this device does not provide matching at all ports. However, it can be matched at a single port. So, let us uh, now discuss one by one all these uh, devices. The first device that I would like to discuss is the T. There are two common types of T's. One is what is called an E plane T. Now, E plane T is a single conductor waveguide whose shape is given like this. electric fields the rule of thumb for electric fields is that they are always exi they always exist between the surfaces which are closest to each other so for an e plane t since these two surfaces are closest to each other the e plane t will be the electric fields will be between these two surfaces the magnetic fields however are concentric to these electric fields so they are in the plane of this t so for example for these electric field lines the magnetic fields will be rotating about these electric field lines. Now, this is an E plane T, a kind of complementary structure where the shape is same, but the widths are different is what is called an H plane T. In H plane T again the same principle will be followed that the electric field lines are between the surfaces which are closest to each other and the magnetic field lines will be like this. Concentric to the electric fields. So, this structure is known as H plane T. Now, the, the S parameter matrix we can show by a derivation, but uh, I can just simply state it. The for an E plane T, if we go back to this figure, the S the phase difference between say this is port 1, this is port this is port 2, this is port 1, and this is port 3. The phase difference between any signal exiting suppose we input power at port 2 and the phase difference of the exiting signals at port 1 and 3 will be phi phase shifted. Whereas, for an H plane T if we have power entering port 2 then there will be no phase shift between ports 1 and port 3. So, this is port 3 for a H plane T this is port 1 if you have power entering port 2 there will be no phase shift between ports 1 and port 3 of the power exiting through them. So, with this knowledge uh, we can I am just simply stating the S parameter matrix of the E plane T which is given like this. So, this is an 
this is the S parameter matrix for an E plenty. S parameter matrix for an H plane T will be similar except that these negative signs will not be here. So, there is this shows that there is no phase shift between say, so this is S 2 3 and this is S 2 1. The presence of a negative sign shows that the phase shift between ports 1 and 3 for power entering port 2 is 180 degrees. For an H plane T there will be exactly the same except these negative signs will not be there. The next class of uh, three port devices uh, that I stated was circulators. So, for a T we saw that it was a reciprocal and lossless device, for a circulator it is a it is a lossless and matched, but not reciprocal. So, a T was lossless and reciprocal, but not matched at all ports. A circulator is matched and lossless, but not reciprocal. So, it is the first non reciprocal uh, material uh, that we are seeing, and there are some special materials which have this property, which are passive materials, but they kind of because of the different polarizations introduced when waves are traveling in different directions to the same material because of that uh, because of that when wave travels in one direction you get a different power transfer as compared to the power transfer happening when the wave travels in the other direction so for a circulator uh, suppose since i said all the ports are matched i might be able to write the S parameter matrix like this. Now, since it is lossless, it should satisfy the unitary condition, and from this equation, we get the following equation. Now, with some suitable scaling of the various arms of this uh, circulator, that is by scaling the arms, I mean I change the phase relationships at the different ports. The final uh, S parameter uh, matrix that I get for this circulator can be given as. The symbol of a circulator is like this, this is port 3, this is port 1, port 2. We use an arrow to show the direction in which power transfer is allowed. So, in this case power as also seen from this S parameter matrix, we see that S 2 1 equal to 1, but S 1 2 equal to 0. What this means is power can transfer from port 1 to port 2, but not from port 2 to port 1. And also we see S 
3 2 is equal to 1, but S 2 3 is equal to 0. So, again what it means is power can transfer from port 2 to port 3, but not back and again S 1 3 is equal to 1, but S 3 1 is equal to 0, which also which again means that power can transfer from port 3 to port 1, but not in the reverse direction. Now, what are some applications of a circulator? A uh, circulator is uh, even though it might appear to be a very novel uh, device, it is actually quite extensively used because sometimes it is not that this non reciprocal devices are always undesirable. There are some very specific uses of these uh, devices. Let us see some of the uses. One is if you say, say this is your circulator and you connect a negative resistance to say port 3, port 2. Now, negative resistance will always cause the input say if this is my uh, say B 3 that is entering this negative resistance then A 3 the wave incident at port 3, but reflected from the load will be act the magnitude of this wave will actually be greater than the magnitude of B 3, because gamma L magnitude will be greater than 1. So, we saw that for passive devices gamma L is always has a magnitude lesser than 1, but when the resistive resistance is, is negative, the magnitude of the reflection coefficient will be greater than 1. And, uh, so, with such a setup, any signal entering port 1 will be allowed to pass to only port to port 3 only, at which point it will get amplified and transmit back to port 2 and any transmission back from port 2 to port 1 is not allowed. So, this is this will act like an amplifier. Then one other use could be suppose I connect uh, my a uh, matched load to my circulator at the port 3 once again and uh, so what is happening is that power will transfer from port 1 to port 2 and in the reflection in the reflected path power any any say signal that is reflected from port 2 will be allowed to transmit only to port 3, where it gets absorbed by this match load. So, since here the A 3 reflected wave will be 0 and only B 3 will so any signal reaching port 3 once it encounters Z 0, it will not be no component of that B 3 will be reflected back. So, we have here gamma L is equal to 0 because of that A 3 is 0 and so power will transfer only from port 1 to 2 any reflection happening at port 2 will never come back to port 1. So, this is like an isolator. Symbol for isolator is like this. a solid arrow. And one other use of a circulator is what is known as a shared antenna. So, a shared antenna you know in communication we have to use the same and often use the same antenna for both the transmitter as well as the receiver. Uh, but then to do that we have to allocate different time uh, time slots for the uh, for the transmitter and the receiver that often becomes a problem because such a allocation needs a good switch and there should also be no leakage between the signals of the transmitter and receiver so there a circulator comes handy because if this is our antenna then and suppose this is the path along which signal transmission is allowed. 
and any signal received by the antenna will be transmitted only along this path, it will be received by the antenna and suppose the receiver is well matched, then no component of the received signal will be transmitted back to the transmitter. The transmitter on the other hand, any signal that it sends will reach the antenna first and if the antenna is well matched, then it will not allow any reflected wave, it will allow no reflection back and so no component of the transmitted signal will be received back by the by the receiver so this is a duplexer implementation and finally the next uh, the third category of three port devices that i mentioned which is reciprocal and matched at all ports but not lossless that kind of device is called a power divider. So, it is reciprocal plus matched, but not lossless. Now, power divider is a well known circuit, a simple resistive network can provide power division. So, let us see a simple resistive power divider. Say Z0 is the characteristic impedance at all three ports and say we have three resistances of value Z0 by 3, Z0 by 3 and Z0 by 3. Now, you can verify that if I connect a load Z0 to each of these ports, uh, say I call this port 2, this is port 3 and this is port 1. Suppose I connect uh, impedance Z0 at ports 2 and 3 and then I try to find out the input impedance Z in, then Z in will be equal to Z 0 and that will be true for all the other ports. So, such a now this kind of implementation is achieves power division and it is very simple, but then the problem with this implementation is that if we go back to our slide, any signal entering port 1 will be equally divided between ports 2 and 3 or by suitably adjusting these resistances, we can have a division ratio between ports 2 and 3. But uh, any signal entering port 3 will also have a component appearing at port, port 2 in addition to the component appearing at port 1. And some applications what happens is it is desirable to isolate these ports 2 and 3 that is only power division is possible only when uh, signal enters port 1, but when signal enters port 3, no component of that will appear at port 2 or vice versa. So, one such uh, implementation is using a circuit known as Wilkinson power divider. So, the circuit for this Wilkinson power divider is like this. The circuit is like this and 
any port power entering port 1 will be equally divided between port 2 and port 3, but no component of power entering port 2 will appear at port 3. Now, you can verify that the input impedance is Z in Z0 for all the ports. The methods have been shown in the slides associated with this, uh, the analysis methods have been shown in the slides associated with this lecture. Uh, the S parameter matrix of this uh, Wilkinson uh, power divider can be given by this equation. If we can go back to our uh, slides please, uh, the S parameter matrix is given by this matrix. We see that it is a reciprocal device because it is symmetric. It is also matched because the diagonal elements are 0 and uh, this uh, J is introduced because of the presence of these quarter wavelength uh, pieces of transmission lines. Now, every time uh, now, what these quarter wavelengths as we know the total electrical angle of a quarter wavelength of transmission line is pi by 2. That is why uh, whenever uh, that is why we have say S21 is actually equal to minus J upon root 2. That means, any time power enters a signal enters port 1 by the time it reaches port 2 it is phase shifted by pi by 2 and same is the case for the signal appearing at port 3. Uh, of course, we see one thing that S 2 3 is equal to S 3 2 is equal to 0, which means ports 2 and 3 are isolated. So, in this lecture we covered the three uh, port devices. As I said there are three types of three port devices. The first one being uh, reciprocal and also lossless, but not matched at all ports. It can be however matched at one port and that device is called a T. The second device which we discussed was, uh, was non-reciprocal, lossless and matched at all ports. That device was called circulator. And the third device that we studied was reciprocal matched at all ports, but not, uh, but not lossless. Then that device we call it as power divider. In the next lecture, we shall be covering four port microwave devices and four port microwave devices are known by the general term of coupler. Thank you.